Hey guys, so today we're going to touch a little bit on why I think it's very important for you to never ever get so full of yourself that you don't hear somebody out. Let's get into it. So, the other day I was, uh, well let's just say that I was working and I had this, this, uh, I, do, I don't want, I want to call it this this issue but I saw that one of my co-workers had started without read I maybe he had informed us I don't know I wasn't informed about the decision anyway but I started noticing that there was a reoccurring pattern in uh, in the way that he was committing code so for most of the code base that I've been working in when it, in this case it's this part of the code is just all JavaScript so it's basically just a big react application right he, the code base is for the most part standardized on using default export, the ES6, ES6 syntax for default exports. And he had started working towards this pattern where he doesn't use these default exports anymore. He's just export, explicitly exporting every single thing, naming every single thing and exporting it as a variable basically. And I thought that was a little bit peculiar, so we had a little bit of a talk about it. And he said that he's like, you, because I, w I wanted to touch on this, because I was saying to him that when you start adding this pattern, I mean, I, I don't mind all that much. It's more that you have to think a little bit about the impact as to what's going to happen if you start introducing this pattern. Number one is that you now create a little bit of a fork in the code base which may or may not lead to this cascading on you because you may not think so now, but somebody might find your specific piece of software and simply use that as a template for how they're going to write their code and then the problem kind of cascades on you. And unless you have a really good reason why to, like, as to why you're changing this pattern that is fairly established, I would like you to rethink it a little bit. Now this person I mean he's extremely extremely knowledgeable but I, I he let's just say that due to me I, he probably perceives me as being a little bit of a I'm not saying expert because I'm not guys I'm not an expert at JavaScript it's more I have more seniority in this specific area than he has and so he kind of, you know, and this happens. I mean, this happens to me as well. I mean, if you're sitting next to somebody you know is really, really good, you kind of in, almost instinctively take, the, like, put yourself below that person. I know that I do, especially when I code review my really, you know, really skilled Scala coworkers. You know, I mean, they know, they really know their shit, right? They really know it. And who am I, you know, to come in there and give them pointers? But you should, you should still give them pointers. And so he said well yeah I, it's just that I think that it's better to not use default exports and I kind of you know I'm sitting there I'm going what how could this in any way affect anything uh, why would not using a default export I mean in the, you know in my mind all right if you're exporting a react component and you just do a default export you're just saving time you don't have to like create a variable name export that and then destructure on the consumer side or the importer side of things and you know not having to use destructuring for every little thing is kind of it's a good thing because it does actually it, there are a few things apart from webpack in some cases not being able to figure out what to actually import tree shaking i know people are talking about tree shaking but that's not always a given thing depending on how you actually export and how the dependency chain looks but yeah absolutely you can do that it's just but you know from my perspective it just seems like a big hassle right and so i said okay but you know if you do that and let's say that now you convince us all to make this migration then we put ourselves in a bit of a risk here as well because now we in the, we're in the situation where all right so you change a default export to just a normal export now you need to go and look and make sure that you find all of the places where this has changed so that you don't involuntarily break the code which is a notoriously hard thing to fix okay or it's something that very often ha happens in in javascript land and he says yeah and i know but it's just that i thought about it and i think that this is a good i think it's still it's a good it's a good, a good approach so i say okay well can you elaborate a little bit like wh where's the big benefit to, to doing this because what i see is a 
it's a it seems to be a bit of a risk to do this i'm not saying it's wrong i just want to hear your perspective on it because in my mind we need to motivate why we make this decision and then he explains to me that from his perspective the problem when you import something as a default is that you are not forced to use the same name as the exported variable which means that when you do it when you make a default export and you import that you can literally name your import virtually anything and that is a great thing but it's not at the same time because now there's no connection between what's actually in the file and what the importer is calling the thing that's coming from the file and when he said that it made it just clicked in my head and i realized that he's actually right that's actually a not it's not a great thing it's not the word end of the world but it's not a great thing what you want is to have a connection between what's in the file or rather the thing that you're grabbing from the from the module that you are importing you want that specific name to be on the export on the importer side as well because now there's a connection between the two which means that you can actually trust that the naming is consistent all all the way through because now you're forcing some you're, you're forcing people to use the actual name not just rename it whatever they want and this kind i mean I, i have never thought about this before rather it's never been something that i thought was all that important but when he said it it made complete sense so we talked about it and i told him like congrats dude i mean also and he said yeah I, oh, yeah i know it was a little bit scary for me to just to to like have this conversation with you and i go and i go dude dude relax just i mean you have you, you have a really great point here we should talk to the others about it and maybe we should actually adopt this practice instead and you, you i want you to know you should never be afraid to speak your mind with me i you know i don't know everything just because i've taking care of a few issues with the webpack build and you know so forth and so forth and he said yeah i know i know but still it, it feels a little bit intimidating and i go i understand i have the same scenario with our, our senior scholar developers but you should always always give people the benefit of the doubt present your idea in a clear manner and see what happens and in this scenario he was absolutely right and i learned something rather i have another thing that i can now add to my mental toolbox if you will something to consider and maybe this will actually become standard practice for me now as well i'll pl play around with it a bit and see if it holds all the way through because i can foresee a few situations where it might not be a great thing but who knows at at the, at the very least it seems to be a really intriguing idea to keep with you when you're doing you know when you're working with javascript so that's what i want you to take away from this guys just because somebody is more junior than you or so forth like always always just hear them out first and foremost just listen to the idea and really listen and try to consider what they're saying because odds are that they may actually have a good point have a great day